This skill builder is called Charleston modeling. The purpose of this exercise is to build your confidence with decision making overall. When I do any of my Charleston modeling exercises, my goal is to have four discards or fewer after the exercise. To me, that's an indication of good decision making. You want to get all your tiles out, give them a really good mix. The next thing you want to do is decide if you want to be the dealer or non-dealer. Dealer gets 14 tiles, non-dealer gets 13. We'll just say for this exercise, we're going to be the dealer, so we're going to get 14 tiles. This is going to mimic our drawn hand. The next thing we need to do is create a mock Charleston. This is not meant to be exactly like the Charleston that you would experience when you're playing with four people, because of course you're by yourself, but it's a close second. We're going to get three tiles and make a column six high. There's the mock Charleston right across left left across right now there could be jokers in here if we get a joker during the charleston i'm just going to exchange it with one of these tiles out here if you want to you could go through all those tiles and pull out the jokers and then pull together your tiles but i just do an exchange so i'll leave that decision up to you when we look at our drawn hand I highly recommend that you put them in this order. Jokers, flowers, winds, dragons, then your numbered tiles in order. There are certain patterns that you will be able to see if you set them up that way in the beginning. Once you identify a category that you wanna play, you can rearrange them. Let's see what we got. We have a couple of jokers a pair of flowers, a couple of dots, a couple of bams, and a block of cracks. We have no winds or dragons. So most likely we're gonna look for options with no winds or dragons, at least to start, because we need to identify tiles to pass for the Charleston. I think that building around multiples is the strongest way to start. So in this case, this would be the strength of our hand. Three, flower. So I want to look at the rest of my tiles and see what I can use to support these two multiples. A three and flowers. We could play maybe an addition hand. We have a one, we have no white dragon though, but that's one single tile that we could either get in the Charleston or draw. Let's see if we have tiles to go with our three. The seven would go with our three and we actually have it. I think we maybe could play an addition hand. As an option, we may be able to play something consecutive. So let's hold the twos and the fours. Now, that's gonna leave us with like numbers. I think passing like numbers is just as bad as passing a pair, and I would not do that. I think we need to give up on something here. We could do something three, four consecutive run, or maybe mixed suit. Let's go ahead and, let's see. We could maybe do three two three four two three three four one two let's give up the four dot and leave ourselves a little bit of consecutive options here and it's really six one half dozen the other as far as which to give up let's see what happens if we pass these so we're going to focus on the addition category and because the addition category is so specific we've actually picked a hand already and this would be seven plus three equals 10 for the mock card. Let's pass these three. 
So we're just going to put it right in front of us, and then we're going to take our first right. We have an 8 and a 1, a east, which we don't need, and an 8 dot. So we can see here we have 7, 3. Really, this 3 is not going to help with an 8 at all. So I think we could give up the 8. But again, I don't want to pass like numbers. You want to build your hand while still passing defensively. So I think we should probably give something up here. Now there is a consecutive run hand that uses one, two, three, four knitted where we would have like a one, two, three, one, two, three with flowers. Or a two, three in mixed suits. Let's break this up and give up a one so we're not passing like numbers. So, this is the kind of decision making that you want to work through. Look at the card, look at the tiles you have, build around your multiple, find the best category that uses them, give yourself options if you can. Let's go ahead and pass this for our cross pass. If you get a joker just exchange it we have a pair and we do have a three here maybe we could switch to like numbers let's keep the three so we would have like numbers with threes maybe now we could potentially play mixed suits if we get that one bam back we could pass the two four eight that's a little risky because it's all evens i think we should give up the like number and pass one of each suit and focus on addition there's that joker Get rid of it. Another joker. A flower. We need four flowers for addition. We've got options with either mixed suits or one suit. And we have tiles to pass. Now this is a little risky, but I think I want to keep my options open. Let's pass them. Here we have a pair and a six bam. We have to make a choice because I am not going to pass a pair. We went right across left. This is the first, uh, second left, so now we're going across. So we have to decide. Because we have no gaps with the one suit option, I think we should break that up and pass the seven dot because we can use the jokers to help us with our seven crack. Let's pass these three and we're going to get our cross pass. Look at, we got threes and a dragon. This is why I don't like to pass like numbers. Let's look at the like numbers. Oh, there's no dragons. That's okay though, because we can pass it and that's not too awfully risky. Let's pass this for our last right. If we can get a white dragon or a seven crack or maybe the threes switch to like numbers with threes let's see what we get here a green dragon all right we have tiles we can pass for optional cross we went right across left left across right now we get to do the optional cross and we're we're going to pass three let's see if we can get that one bam back you do get tiles back in the charleston Let's see if it happens. Oops. Actually, we don't want the one band back because we're not doing mixed suits. We got a three. I think we should switch to like numbers with threes. Like numbers with threes.
So we have two choices for like numbers. The first one, pair of flowers, so we wouldn't need both. And then three Kongs of threes. We could use the joker here and here to Kong. All we would need is more three bams or jokers to make that happen. The other thing I would probably do is hoard wins and see if we could get like numbers with news. So I would discard these. We have five discards. I'd rather have four or fewer, but we've got no gaps. And I think that's pretty good. We could even hold these and switch back to the addition hand. Just hold on to these for as long as possible. Discard these first. We got options. If you have four discards or less after the Charleston, I'd say that was a success. If you have four discards and you have no gaps in whatever it is that you're intending, I would call that a success also because you built all those random tiles into something that could be a winner. No gaps. That's a good thing. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the bell if you do, so you get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next skill builder, may all your picks be keepers.